We'll come back from lunch while you're observing your gourmet repast. <laughs> Jeff Weiss is going to tell us all about uh, postcards and printing uh, to a real printer on the two channels. screen working, uh, but we'll still be able to still do the slideshow uh, through a window, so there'll be some noise on the screen. Please ignore that. My name is Jeff Weiss. I will be talking about postscript printing on the Apple II GS, and we'll be looking at this uh, from printing on a real computer, and I'll also be touching on how to generate P uh, PDF documents using the LaserWriter driver. Uh, using uh, the results of the laser writer driver so one could effectively be creating PDF documents from the Apple II GS. So, in the past year, there has been, I saw at least one report of an HP LaserJet Pro 4000 series having issues printing from an Apple II. It turned out that I misread what the initial report was, but I got my hands on a LaserJet 4000 series printer and connected up through Apple Talk printing. Uh, it does not have serial printing support like some of the early Apple LaserWriter printers. Connected it up. Uh, the computer at the time was running either System 601, 604, doesn't really matter, they're identical um, in terms of uh, the driver. And um, we'll see in a little bit the result that I got. So, um, in order to do Apple Talk printing on HP laser jets, especially, uh, more specifically, uh, models from the 90s, uh, 2000 time period, you need to have a, 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 a printer with an EIO, EIO slot, um, which uh, in the EIO slot you have a card, a Jet Direct card. Um, if you get the 600 series card, it will have a local talk port on it, as well as Ethernet. Uh, the Ethernet will support TCP/IP printing, uh, as well as EtherTalk printing. Go back here. Um, in order to connect the printer to the computer, uh, a local talk connection is going to be needed. Um, I'm going to be using Phonet, so I have Phonet uh, set up right now. Uh, other options is if you just want to do a single uh, direct connection between the printer and the computer, you can use a standard Apple 8 pin DIN uh, serial cable. Uh, it will work uh, as, lo as local talk um, in that situation as well as Apple had uh, made a bunch of local talk transceivers uh, that can be used to connect uh, computers on a local talk network. Uh, those uh, items uh, at the time when they were made were very expensive. Even today they're very expensive. Uh, phone net was chosen because at the time they were cheap, and today they're still cheap. You can get a phone net uh, transceiver for uh, under for, for five dollars or even less. So looking at phone net, uh, two transceivers are needed. There will be a standard R, um, RJ45, I think. Uh, uh, 45? RJ11. RJ11, thank 11. you. Yes, 45 is Ethernet. Yeah. RJ11 uh, telephone wire, make sure it's four pin wire. Connect between bo two boxes. Uh, also, you want to terminate both uh, the, the two ends, so make sure you have a terminator. It's basically a resistor uh, inside an RJ11 phone connector. Uh, and that's the telephone, and that's why it's called phone, for phone net. Uh, then you have the standard 8-pin DIN connector that will connect to the serial port slash local plug port on your 2GS. So printing, uh, the, as I said, the driver uh, from 601 to 604 is identical. Uh, in order to install local talk printing, uh, you go into the uh, installer. Uh, 
you want to make sure you choose these four items, the System 6 hard disk from our FDHD, <coughs> Fon Sol, Dell Printer Neighbor, and Printer Laser Writer. Uh, specifically, if you have a 256 uh, meg uh, TGS, otherwise known as a ROM 1, uh, make sure you remove the easy access from your system setup. Uh, I recommend that because uh, even though that provides more compatible, more look and feel with a uh, ROM 3 hardware, uh, it is the many pieces of software that's not compatible with the way the easy access was designed for ROM 1. So you'll find some software will break. If you remove it, you'll find the software won't break. So, um, I'll just talk through this, then we'll, we'll go through the demo. Uh, to um, so, <coughs> as, so when you boot the computer up, you want to be able, you, you need to select the printer uh, because you just now have a new network. You have a new printer on the network, so it needs to be selected for applications to see. So go to the control panel, open up the net printer control panel. Uh, it'll take a few moments for uh, the, the app clock network to be scanned. It'll find a uh, a new laser writer, uh, but because this is not an Apple printer, uh, it will uh, display with uh, the uh, appropriate name of the device, and then you'll select the printer, and then you'll be able to print from 2GS applications. Um, I'm going to um, provide a spoiler right now. Uh, when I first did this, uh, it turned out uh, it didn't print. So we're going to go through the process that I followed to troubleshoot the, to get the error message, troubleshoot the error message, and what had, to be, what had to be done to fix this problem. And after this, we'll be looking at, uh, as an added bonus, uh, how to make a PDF file um, using GoScript on a, on a modern computer uh, for the results of the laser router driver. Uh, so a 2 user could uh, result uh, with a PDF document. All right, we'll switch over. So what I have here is System 604. As I mentioned, in order to select the printer, control panels, and we're going to, going to blazing speed of an Apple IIGS. Select that printer, open it up, and since this network had, since the printer has been on, the network has been up for a while, the printer will show up uh, immediately. Uh, if you had just boot up the computer and then turn the printer on afterwards, uh, it will take a few moments. So, uh, the, uh, I do not recall what the actual uh, original name of the printer was. Um, the 2GS does have the support of naming the printer, name it whatever you want. So, over in the control panel, you have Namer, and uh, Apple provided uh, the ability to rename this printer and will always show up on the, on the local talk network as the name you gave. So I, uh, I had a couple different printers uh, for testing and seeing what it looked like having multiple printers on a local talk network. And I had to make sure I named each uh, printer individually to make sure I knew which one was which. One was which. So this is a customized name, and this is not what the default name is. So uh, it detected a laser writer, um, or the way to interpret that is it detected a PostScript printer. And all you have to do is select the printer, and that's all you have to do. So uh, this is uh, default system 604. And I can prove that. Well, you have to trust me that it is, but it does say system 604. So let's go into, since 604 comes with Teach, uh, this is what it was used for testing, so it's quick and dirty. So let's do a test, and let's go ahead and print. Um, I do have this printer configured slightly differently from how, it's, how it comes with the default. Uh, when I first did this step, the printer had a blinking data light, which you can't tell over there, but there's a blinking data light, and then it stopped. Um, obviously now you can hear the printer starting up and uh, spinning out a page. Um, this printer was configured slightly differently so I can get some um, better output. This jet direct card does have the ability to provide a stack trace of an error. So I did enable that. 
And once I enabled that and set a print document from the TGS, I now have a stack trace of the postscript of what is wrong. Well, um, now, I know, now I know at least the TGS is successfully sending data to the printer, but there's something wrong with the postscript that Apple computers put in the driver to, uh, for the printer to understand. So, well, let's test this with some other printers, just to make sure to see if the print driver's buggy um, had a chance to print it to a, um, one of the, one of the, uh, uh, one of the postscript, postscript two model Apple laser writers, I don't remember which one, 360 or something like that, and it prints successfully. Uh, so obviously, that means, so this printer is postscript level two, uh, versus the early Apple laser writers, which, which were PostScript level one. When Apple designed this driver, it, they designed it for level one, uh, but because some of, some of Apple's level, level two printers work, and one of the changes Apple specifically made in 601 uh, was improved compatibility with level two PostScript. It was in the release notes. So, um, so that, that gives some clues that, so that, that does give some clues. Uh, so seeing this, I'm looking at the output, and I don't know PostScript. Uh, I'm familiar with some of the stack-based languages, but not PostScript. So um, what do you do next? Next thing to do is what happens if we try uh, a different laser writer driver? So what I'm going to do is is try System 6.0. Take the laser laser writer driver from 6.0. Put it in here. And well, I'll tell you, what, I'll do I'll the same time because I don't have a good computer and have the driver load. If I do that. Uh, it will print successfully, which then that gives a weirder question mark. Why does the non-optimized level two driver work on the level two printer, but the optimized level two driver not work? One of the things that I had done back in 2002, uh, working on a different project, was to disassemble the laser writer driver. Um, I just realized that. Let me start to see. I didn't move the icon over. So, this while, it's for, for, for this time, let me open this up. I've had access to the sort. Oops. So we load the binary. Then we're going to have to load the template, which I have. I will making I will be making this template available for those who have or, uh, the Orca disassembler. And this is the this uh, template works as I said for the driver from 601 to 604 since it's all the same version. So I through here, uh, this gives an understanding of how the uh, laser writer driver works. Um, uh, the project that I started on uh, never got finished, but uh, do have this uh, uh, initial perspective. Again, no one, no idea what how the PostScript language works. It, in uh, you know, high level, yes, but. Actual details know. So, as an Apple II user, if we have something that doesn't work, what do we do? We fix it. <laughs> All right. So, um, it took about, it actually took about a month, not, not continuously, but on and off, um, a couple hours here this week, a couple hours that week, uh, sometimes a few more hours, to try to figure out this whole postscript nonsense. And like, how does this really work? Why is there a bug yet? So, what was so? Let me go back my stuff. What was the change between System 6.0 and System 6.01? 6 
uh, the change for the level two compatibility, uh, the change there was uh, the, the the change that uh, I can't remember. If there's one or two changes uh, for that level for the level one level, level two, uh, but the change that seemed to be the most obvious, uh, which matched the push crypto, which was the important clue, was the color generation color slash grayscale. Uh, it's TotalScript Level 2 had a different way of generating, um, uh, I'm trying to remember the words, uh, a, a, a hash pattern for grays. Uh, didn't, level 1 doesn't support grayscale, it's only black and white, but to simulate gray, you do some, it has a, uh, a simulated hash pattern, so it does a, a, a pattern. Well, the half tone, that was the word, thank you, yes. So it was a half tone map. The half tone map code between level 1 and level 2 are incompatible. So, okay, uh, this becomes a clue. So now I'm diving in using GhostScript to start uh, editing the code. And, see, and what, what was odd was GhostScript worked with both 60, 601 uh, drivers. Uh, so if GhostScript works, and uh, I assume, well, it was bizarre that GhostScript worked, GhostScript worked, this printer doesn't. Other printers have been known to work. And all right, start diving into trying to figure out PostScript. A uh, <coughs> month later, after doing lots of Google searching to try to figure out what other people around that time were doing for halftone, and specifically how to provide compatibility with a halftone map with level one, level two. I ran across a output document, a PostScript output document from Adobe, um, one of the Adobe products of the time, that had a layout that was very similar to Apple's LaserWriter driver. And looking at how it was pushing and popping um, elements on the stack, I said, oh, look at that. There's a, there's a different. There was a, it was doing stuff on the stack differently, with very general, broad strokes. So I rewrote the code for the halftone map using, it wasn't just a one-to-one -one check because uh, the stack, uh, the assumption that the Adobe code had was a little bit different from Apple, so once you, you know, readjust that, plop it in, uh, assemble it, and it works. So we're going to go see this work now. Yes. I came in late, but is current technology and laser printers still using ProScript, or is great, it using something else? Great question. Uh, many printers, I don't know if I can say most, but many printers do have ProScript. Uh, more and more printers are, well, I was about to say something really that I cannot with certainty say, say that. But if you look at the spec specification for, for, for printers, um, if, a printer, if a printer has PostScript, it'll be PostScript level three. And I, PostScript level three half tone support is a, is backward, backwards compatible with PostScript level two. Uh, I have yet to test uh, this driver out with PostScript level three. Uh, but yes, as PostScript, um, I expect uh, the, but as, you have to look at the specifications. Is the short answer. Um, HPs still have uh, st are still labeled. I can't guarantee that the cheap consumer models, but the business class uh, models still have PostScript compatibility. Um, well, from my experience, the printer, printers last forever. And, some, some, and yeah, yeah. you can find one, and even if it's 15 years yeah. old, it's still. Give me one second, I want to follow that thought. Um, 
But uh, modern day printers won't have local clock connectors or the EIO. But yes? Oh, I was just going to say that in theory you could set up a cup server like on a another computer and get uh, okay. And you then use that as a translator between PostScript and you know a newer printer that may not use. And that was NetCap. Oh no, it's Cups. It's oh, Cups. Cup printer. Yeah. Uh, well, Cups. Uh, the thing with Cups is you still need a local talk connection uh, between the 2GS and the printer, uh, and that's the, one of the missing pieces uh, to try to uh, uh, get more modern devices. Uh, but could you, you use something like a Dana Etherprint or something if you pick up a Dana Etherprint? Yeah, uh, does local talk to Ethernet. Great question. Uh, I don't have any experience with the local talk to Ether talk adapters, or if I'm not using the right term, uh, what the actual term is. Um, I don't know. Can I give you a quick answer? Okay, we have an answer. There are s several versions of those Etherprint driver boxes. The Dana Etherprint. There's the, the uh, Plastic box ones usually do not work on a 2GS. The metal, metal ones, ones do. do. And they will convert the network perfectly. You can use, what, if the printer will take your Apple Talk, your PostScript, it'll print. And if the ones that don't work, what happens is you get most of the way through the boot, se the boot section in GSOS and you get a really hard, nasty crash. Okay. So it's the plastic dyno talk works. Metal oh, metal, sorry. Okay. For those who are listening. It continues to impress me to this day that a box plugged into the serial port outside can totally crash the computer. Yes. Yeah. Uh, just regarding printers, the general rule is consumer printers are either so-called wind printers that basically just take raw graphical data, or if you're lucky, or if you're going to do a little nicer support PCL. Um, a lot of business printers do support PostScript. Like you were saying, look at the specs, a lot of brands won't actually say PostScript because they didn't license it from Adobe, they did their own thing. For example, Brother uses VR script, but that's PostScript. Yeah. So yes, the, uh, the summary is look, look at the specs. Um, there may be some alternatives to the new PostScript on some printers. Um, so Google, double check. Uh, PCL is not PostScript. Uh, some print, a lot of the printers have, a, have PostScript emulation under PCL. But that usually doesn't cause a problem. Usually is a key word here. All right, so I rebooted, got the driver loaded, and I'm gonna make sure I have the printer detected. To go for this step. Got the printer. So let's print a document, and I'm, I'm very confident that this will now work. Except for the demo guys, of course. <laughs> and now I'm being threatened that the uh, the deities of demos will cause much embarrassment. Yeah. As the page comes out of the third side. <laughs> <laughs> making this beta driver available on the Kansas Express website. I'll be, be making the disassembler uh, template available for those who want to take a look at uh, how the laser laser printer driver works internally. Uh, my doc my uh, comments, notes, etc. in it uh, are in some areas better than other areas. Uh, so um, I, don't, I don't mind sharing what I've done. So. Okay. Now we're going to switch back. So that's the uh, real 2GS side of things. We're going to switch over to to a uh, an emulator. All right. So what I'm going to do is do uh, to get the. Uh, so one of the features of the PostScript printing is, sorry, one of the features of the laser running driver is the ability to save PostScript files to disk instead of sending the document to the printer. So I'm going to go through the exercise of that. I'm going to load a document here. What I'm going to load is the Jabberwocky 
from Lewis Carroll. Uh, it's licensed, it's uh, no copyright, so we can uh, use this uh, to print. Uh, so we have the standard print dialog box. Uh, in, order to, in order to create a file, uh, one has to hold down open Apple F and then OK, and then click OK. Um, I have noted that uh, it doesn't always work the first time, so we'll see how many times we have to do this before we get the document. It works this time. Good. So the, the reason why the find dialog box showed up was because the open apple open apple F key was being held down. So how can I, how can we uh, how can we check that the, the document got written? Well, there was no error message. It's one. Number two, uh, because since I'm in Teach, I can look at text files. I'm going to go look at where the file got saved. Uh, the file will always be saved in the the root hard disk system drivers. And uh, and I forgot to delete the uh, last. Uh, the file before I started the demo. Uh, so uh, it wrote the PostScript GSO1 and want to prove that it just got created. We can go look at the time date stamp of this. And it was done 2.40 p.m., so we know that it was done uh, just a moment ago. Or well, either that, I was cleverly knew how long this uh, process was going to take. So now I'm going to do wave my hands and get this file onto the uh, host system. So um, waving my hands to do this. We have this file in the directory right here. Uh, there's, I did magic. I copied the file initially. I don't have a uh, mechanism um, uh, on, my, on the system right now to quickly get the document from a disk image onto the host system. And um, the magic was supposed to have been the same file name, but um, they got renamed to it got renamed magically as well to PostScript. We got the document right here. Let's make this a little bit larger so everyone can see. Uh, that's not going to work. You have to trust me that this is PostScript GS00. All right. So the next step is uh, to, uh, to convert the file to uh, convert the file to, to a PDF. The Go script comes with a command called ps, the number two PDF, ps two PDF. Uh, as what the name says, it's PostScript two PDF. The this command does check the file name to make sure it has a file name extension of .ps. Uh, the default file comes from the two GS doesn't have that, so let's rename the file and using a unit flight operating system. Yep. Yes? Does that support the graphics in PostScript or just text? Uh, oh, great question. If uh, The demo I'm going to do is just graphics. Um, if people want, I can use uh, extended time and we can do a whole graphic. No, I don't. We can do a graphics exercise as well. But um, I'm going to just wave my hand and say graphics will work. As long, as long as the 2GS program that you're using supports the open Apple app to save the file to disk, it will support graphics as well. Um, I should note that there are quite a number of 2GS programs out there that does not provide this compatibility. These programs are trying to be clever by doing some detection of the port device to make sure it's online because uh, if you're on a uh, with an emulator without a printer connected, the port is offline, and the application may fail not generating a file. Uh, so there's a, a Google search can, you know, with the right terms, can sh uh, show some uh, past forum talk of what works, what doesn't work. Um, if not, you know, start asking new questions, and uh, people can help. Uh, so, so yes. So to clarify, uh, the graphic doesn't have to be created. The question was, does if you have a graphic on another platform, can it be printed from the 2GS to do this step? Uh, the answer is, with a, with, a, with a few extra steps in there, yes. If you take a 
a graphical from another system, bring it to the 2GS, convert it into a 2GS graphic format, load it into an Apple 2GS program that can display it, print it with a compatible, in a, in a program that's compatible to print with a laser runner driver that will save a file, then copy the file back to your modern system, and then you can do that, yes. Um, it should be noted that the laser runner driver is monochrome only, um, grayscale slash monochrome, uh, so you will lose, lose color. So, uh, continuing on with this, I'm going to rename the file uh, with a PS extension. I'm going to then do PS to PDF, the new file. I'm going to open Apple Keys on a on non Apple computer. Have to really switch operating systems. All right, so I uh, converted the file. Now I'm, I'm going to use GoScript to view this. I'm cheating by using the command line because it's faster. And the command is GS. And there we have a documented coming from the 2GS. Oh, that's the GoScript version of it. Let me just prove that we have the uh, PDF version of it. So I'm going to run, I'm cheating by uh, running the uh, PDF viewer manually. And here we have the PDF document uh, that essentially came from uh, the output of a 2GS. And I'll be, I'll, I will be providing this as well uh, with the documentation, uh, with everything else from uh, this demo. That's really nice. Any other questions? Great. Thank you very much.